This one's a wacky one, so buck it up homies, episode 4, journey of the self, provoking thought, and I want to start off with a little insert from my guy, Alan Watts, um, and it's called Wonder, or even a wonder, wonder, wonder. But yeah, it's sick, but kind of sets off the tone for for episode four. Wonder is, is like, a, in, in modern philosophy, something you mustn't have. It's like enthusiasm in 18th century England. But you see, I don't know what question to ask when I wonder about the universe. It isn't a question that I'm wondering about, it's a feeling that I have. Because I cannot formulate the question that is my wonder. The moment my mouth opens to utter it, I suddenly find I'm talking nonsense. But that should not uh, prevent wonder from being the foundation of philosophy. Going into our common sense, the 19th century myth, which succeeded the ceramic myth in Western history, I call it the myth of the fully automatic model. Man is a little germ that lives on an unimportant rock ball that revolves about an insignificant star on the outer edges of one of the smaller galaxies. But on the other hand, if you think about that for a few minutes, I am absolutely amazed to discover myself on this rock ball rotating around a, sp a spherical fire. It's a very odd situation. And the more I look at things, I, I cannot get rid of the feeling that existence is quite weird so if you've uh, if you've not heard of Alan Watts before that's him innit I've been listening to him for years and uh, read about five of his books uh, Become What You Are The Zen Way The Book the water course way there's loads he's cool the wisdom of insecurity the age of anxiety he's written like 30 books but unfortunately he's not with us anymore he used to live on a boat in San Francisco and uh, I think he liked to drink a fair bit also but he's a G he tried to bring sort of eastern philosophy to the western world so that people would have a bit more of an understanding I think so after that I thought I would you know go on to the thought provoking part or just a little a little kind of theory that I have or a thought I was thinking about the other day and uh, I just wonder if the world is a globe in the third dimension what shape is it in the fourth or the fifth or the eighth because apparently there's 11 so I mean the globe does exist obviously NASA showed us that one or did they as uh, the red hot chilli peppers say which I only clocked the other day was when they said um, space may be the final frontier but it's built in a Hollywood basement but who fucking knows we just know what we're told 
or C. But from having a look on the internet, there's a lot about how for the past decade, at least, these new age spiritualists and channeled beings have been talking about how the planet Earth is transitioning or ascending uh, from the third dimension to the fourth or the fifth dimension. I mean, what the fuck? And I don't know if you've if you've been looking on the internet as much as I have. I probably probably should chill out a little bit, get out more. But uh, it's interesting. But the uh, the CIA has released these documents in the reading room, and they've released six thousand pages. And that's what I was kind of sort of talking about with Chris in the last episode. But if you look into these docs, none of this is really that loopy. Well, it is, but just because it's unknown to some doesn't mean it's been unknown or been known to others. And I mean, when you look at PS5 games now or VR, we play games in 3D from, you know, the 2D Space Invader beginning. Or you can go to a restaurant now in Japan and see a 5D or it might even be a 7D hologram dragon flying around while you eat your shark fin soup for no reason. And we are, you know, on our way to real world VR gaming or where you're going to jump into a sim. So if you can make that in our realm isn't that a dimension in a dimension or isn't it going that way I always wondered like if, if the programs on on uh, on a GTA like the other ones running around where you just beat up some random geezer for no reason and nick his money I wonder if they just they have any feeling whatsoever you just don't know <laughs> But, I mean, if we can create tech, why, you know, tech that is is similar to, to other dimensions in a sense. So we're at a very early stage of it. In this, this civilization, this time, we're at a young stage of it, but I'm not sure if other civilizations were other, other stages. But isn't it possible that, you know, you could create other dimensions, other perceptions and we just can't see it it may be all we can see at this level of consciousness but what about a higher state or you know the other planes like the astral plane or you know what I said earlier about ascending but to be honest this could be a whole other fucking episode so I just wanted to sort of go for a little trip at the beginning after Alan you know food for thought anyways this is just the start of episode 4 learning about the self is something I've been able and lucky enough to do through this mad time of change of a system we once knew the westernized material realm of the matrix should we say or just covid and non-covid or lockdown and non-lockdown or curfew and non-curfew or control and non-control any way you look at it it's different to what it was before and in regards to the matrix I'm sure it won't be long till we're all back there again working away or some people just work the whole entire time but for me I've been way out of it and after my chat with Chris obviously it got me thinking a little bit but the term far out dude and as far out as it may have seemed that chat 
is anything really that far out anymore or is far out actually where you're meant to be and far in is the lie the game you're meant to be playing to keep the order of things I suppose it depends on where you're looking really and over the last 12 months I've chose to look within I've been looking into the harp and in fact scientifically it's actually a little brain in there which obviously got me thinking more from the heart as they say well we all have big hearts just over time it gets misused or it gets a little tougher around the edges because it got broken sometimes or someone just fucked you off or someone died all these things change how it feels I think and it does it remember I didn't I didn't look that far to be honest but I just remember as a kid how how your heart is it's open to all and it's a terrifying shock when someone's mean or you're in trouble for eating paint like I did a few times but we grow and it's shocking when someone's kind and in this society where it's such a negative narrative all the time and I think at the moment there's so much divide even though it's being portrayed as everyone is becoming aware but surely then we would be moving towards something like equalism or humanism and not divided groups it just really feels to me like there's a game of divide and conquer going on or it's just the opposing positions finally feeling what the oppressed have felt before there's many angles all I hope is that it leads in the right direction but any narrative being pushed by a mainstream media never really seems to be true or a true narrative of the situation is simply being pushed by an agenda and I don't know it just doesn't it doesn't sit right a lot of the time but that's just my theory really I just look into what I see and choosing to believe outlets that make money off negativity death whitewashing phone hacking what else scandals invasion of privacy paedophilia backed by a government that taxes all the wrong drugs and locks you up for all the right ones well the right ones that grow from the ground at least along with fining the homeless and starving kids of the poor which a footballer has to step in to do something right it's just like we're going in the wrong direction all the time in the western world anyway I can't speak for the eastern because it's or any other part of the world because we don't fucking see it apart from America's news but now we're all meant to trust them to shove even more shit in our bodies but I'm not an anti-vaxxer I'm just not a pro-vaxxer either I'm just going to play it out a little bit because we've never been in this situation before so you know my dad's had it he's had twice but He's still walking around clueless like he was before anyway, so he's fine. But I just think we're all being coerced into trusting these people that seem to always fucking let us down. And I I hope they don't. You know, for everyone's sake. But 
I think all this narrative and you know the negative narrative it, it shapes yourself you know you are what you eat whether that be McDonald's or beans healthy healthy beans you know it's the same as your mind you start reading a book on philosophy you start thinking about philosophy you start reading a book on a four hour work week you'll start having a four hour work week simply just you are your own knowledge and I think all of this media and everything else everything we're looking at now and devices and everything else is shaping a general consciousness and it always has for the last 50 or 100 years in the way they use the TV and the radio and everything else and I guess over the last 12 months I've tried to step out of that and just be a bit quiet and talk in the shed like this anyways I don't want to say conspiracy too much in the shed I just want to say theory because I know with science it's like it's repeat 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 then it becomes a fact if the if that exercise proved or that event proved that it can be repeated oh there's a fox outside the shed what's up bro sucking he's right by the shed he's gone now what should we call him Fred Freddy the fox done there's now another member of the shed anyway where was I conspiracies yeah I don't want to say that word too much because I just feel like uh, it throws people off the tracks it's like I'm someone that talks about it is trying to conspire against the truth it's almost like we're programmed to say oh fuck off you twat or bullshit without actually going well, what do you mean or how's that come around as soon as you say conspiracy it's all over like we're in a motion of told beliefs that we can't can't really get out of our head and I think once you truly know or can truly be yourself and just be quiet meditate you see things a lot clearer like untouched water let's say and no I'm not there yet I'm just I'm just thinking out loud and after the last episode I found it a little bit hard to focus on the normality of things or the odd normality that we find ourselves in at the moment but I mean that's only here if you was in New Zealand right now it'd be fucking normal so or quite a lot of other places we always manage to tremendously fuck shit up in this country <laughs> well, we got some things right over the time but I have had you know I'm on furlough and I've had, had some time and since then I've been thinking on a consistent level not every hour but every now and then you know the question who am I and not like who am I you know because at the moment I'm in the shed with Ryan but who am I you know this spirit in you far out man but you know just thinking shit like that thinking how this all started and I, I was I was such a big bang guy you know that sounds so jokes to say I was a big bang guy but not in that way but you know I think there's a lot a lot that's missing along the way with that you know it just fucking happened and here we are and I have always questioned all these things for ages but let's face it when you look at the identity of the Egyptians or you look at the lot of history I think a lot of it has been changed 
for a liking of some others and I think there's a lot of history that's probably missing still and there's a lot you can find out there if you actually take the time to look switch off fucking ITV and have a look have a look just go and have a look you know I'm enjoying it anyway I don't really think I'm a historian <laughs> I'm just fucking nosy and I, I don't want to die not knowing you know because we're all going to die one day and maybe you do know when you do die I mean Chris said it's, 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 it's black there's, n there's nothing there's nothing there which I don't know I'm still working that one out I don't think anyone really knows I mean that could have happened to him and he might not have known he might not have been ready to see the light at the end of the tunnel but before this you know these 12 months my time would be for something else or someone else which at that time was important you know I needed to do that to get to here but I feel since the wheels have stopped on the system we was in and I have a passive income for once my thoughts have truly changed and all I have focused on this time is to build a new system around me that brings in the same passive income because fuck am I going back to before on the dirty rich train which I do like but I want it to work for me a bit more I think everything should work for you a bit more not you work for it more you know your yourself is the most important and that's where I'm getting at with this you know but also the air is that we breathe and your consciousness of your own footprint you know we're all excited about the fucking pubs opening but climate change ain't going nowhere and we ain't really thinking about the air we fucking breathe but I don't want to get too negative because I told you about a negative narrative so but it's true but I do hope everyone gets to do this in your life whether it be retirement middle aged young just you know take take some time to just sit there and think about what you is and what you do step out of the matrix and I'm not talking about Neo even though that film is fucking sick but you know it is a matrix when you think about it there's forms of control there's money that needs to be made needs to keep working and if it doesn't work it changes so you know meditate work out get that stress out I'm officially a hippie meditating every day but it feels fucking dope not gonna lie mad that they don't teach us this in school you know in in the UK I don't think they do anyway but I know in other countries they do maybe in private schools they do in the UK but they should fucking teach us this you know you think you lay down you know rest your body you work out you rest your body you should rest your mind it's fucking obvious to me and I find if I meditate in the evening I sleep like four hours because apparently your mind actually needs longer to sleep and that's where you clock up the eight hours but I am up ready to go at four in the morning ready to skip my garden and I think oh, I can't really do that because the neighbours might start driving people a bit crazy and I think we can all go a bit crazy with all these identities of the self in so many environments now that we fucking forget who we are you know my Instagram bio is this is a fake account of reality because it is you can't really get everything from you know a picture or reels or videos you get a micro dose of them that's why I like podcasts because you can just say whatever the fuck you want 
And if you don't want to listen, you ain't got to listen. <laughs> but you at least hear me enough. But you truly get to know someone when you meet them. That aura, that that energy they give, and the way they talk, their body language, and everything else. You know, and I think that's important in so many ways and in this time we've all been disconnected from that but as I said having the time to stop and think you know to see I'm not just some fucking germ on some fucking rock in the middle of nowhere who works every day to pay to be a germ on this fucking rock we got down and what's on that one I mean the body yeah is, is is mainly bacteria I mean you put anything in it and it fucking eats it but I think we are a bit more than that obviously but I'm happy anyway being in this body and I think that's down to a few things like I think mainly it's discipline discipline of the self that's been the key understanding that there's not a quick fix or a quick buzz that's going to you know resolve that or that knowing that drinking just really ain't what it's sold to be but it's okay because everyone does it fuck that I'm changing and I want to continue and I think you change all the time anyway you change as you grow up and everything else but but now I think I've got kind of the tools like the discipline tools the mind tools the working out tools the eating tools but knowledge I'll never fucking be there you just got to keep learning all the time keep making mistakes because they're just lessons and then let the self grow and then make sure the relationships you know that I gravitate to or the ones from many years you put effort there and you you grow with them relationships your friends, your family, your girlfriends, your boyfriends you know these are important because it's another environment that shapes you and you shape them but I think it does it does take a long time to see or to wake up out of one dream into the next. 21 days, they say, is how long it takes for you to adapt to a new place or get out of a habit and a new mindset from the old one. And I think it's 90 days is how long it takes for a new lifestyle for your brain to truly rewire and to recover from the environment or habits or anything that was in before that stops your focus or your true potential and I've done things like this so I know I've seen my mind change and the more I look and the more I see just how fabricated the world we are in truly is you only have to take psychedelics to see really or to start seeing sorry mum but we have separated ourselves from nature to the point where we use it, we burn it we cut it down, we extract it we even eat it You know, and yes we eat the plants and people like plants have feelings too well, the funny thing is if you look into that one they kind of do but I'm still going to munch on a fucking carrot like but yeah we have just separated ourselves like we're the higher the higher species that takes the higher self and I think it's fucked you only have to replace money with with nature if all we work for was nature the world would be extremely different 
but of course it's not that simple I never know what I'm gonna say or write in my notes for this I swear it does just feel like it comes out of nowhere and I never have really planned like oh I'm gonna do one on Monday but it's usually just what I'm thinking about but in the nature side I've always thought about and I think that's that's the nature in me and in a way my journey feels like it's just beginning in this level of the game I want to take this show around the fucking world Ch chat to a shaman about the spirit realm while I'm on DMT not that you can probably talk while you're on DMT but you know talk sign language to a chimp do shrooms with a fungi and so much fucking more I can't really think of all the shit I want to do right now but for now I'm just going to see where this discovery of the self and mind will flow creatively and peacefully until the aliens come in it <laughs> and take me to a new flowing spaceship which brings me to a show that I think a lot of people probably watched or it's going round or they, they've got it on their watch list and that's um, Sea Spiracy and uh, still though that name it was staring right at him Sea Spiracy they could have just put Conspiracy C it was right there right fucking there but I know it's a take off Cowspiracy but still but anyway I saw I saw that but it wasn't really anything new to me um it just beats kind of the we're all going to be okay because David Attenborough says by the BBC but it was a fucking good doc and I, I rate rate the people that are on that because you will literally get shot for trying to pull off some of the places that they went to or trying to front some of the corporations that really ain't or charities so called charities that really ain't trying to help they're just trying to profitise off, off a problem by saying they're helping the problem and that's happening all the time but there's a part in it where which really resonated with me and it's where uh, a guy called Captain Paul Watson uh, he's a, he's the founder of Sea Shepherd Conservation Society which used to be a sick program on documentaries or Discovery Channel where they used to fucking go after whaling ships and like try and terrorise the Japanese whaling ships that were saying they're doing it for scientific experiments or scientific research where they harpoon a whale and pull it up onto the onto the boat and let it bleed out and basically he said in this in this clip that he was in and the documentary goes into about climate change and obviously everything involved around fishing and what we're doing and the industry and he said uh if you want to address climate change the first thing you do is protect the ocean and the solution to that is you leave it alone I always equate to this being a spaceship the earth being a spaceship it's a trip around the galaxy it takes 250 million years just to make one orbit and every spaceship has a life support system which provides us with food we eat, the air we breathe and regulates the climate, the temperatures that life support system is run by a crew of earthlings and there are only so many crew members you can kill before the machinery begins to break down and you run out of engineers and that's what's happening we're killing off the crew and the reason that resonated with me so much and I felt to bring it to this pod is that we are talking about the self and that self is just as much you as it is everything else in my books and if you look after the environment the environment will look after you 
And once we realise how connected everything is, the spaceship idea sounds sick. I mean, and in my eyes, it'll run like mustard. At the moment, a lot of us have to crack in, crack in, crack on, without a choice, and put up with the bullshit that has blinded us from the nature of what we truly live on. Every other thing on this planet seems to get it though, you know. You don't see a bee start saying to the other bees, come, let's build a skyscraper. And you don't see the flowers saying to the, to the bees, do you like my honey? You know, they just work with their environment and keep it going. So maybe we're not the same. I don't know as I said I'll just think it out loud but I think you have to understand your existence and in turn you'll respect it but if all we see is buildings and McDonald's and pubs you know I think the reason why everyone's become a bit more self aware from this is because they, the only place they could go is fucking nature so they've chilled out a bit more but who knows slowly but surely history unfortunately probably will repeat itself and when all this ends I don't know what's going to happen but look after yourself that's all I'm saying in the next episode probably will be a bit more uplifting but it just depends what comes at that time what I feel like fucking saying or who's on it but May is when I'm going to be doing in the shed shows basically camera all eyes on me all eyes on the guest and you know you'll get to see a lot more but I wanted to build it up this way and make sure I can actually get some listeners I've got quite a fucking lot there's quite a lot yeah. so it's nice that means someone's here rabbiting on but it is better with someone else and I, I, was, I suppose it's probably better for you lot as well so you don't have to listen to me for fuck knows how long this is but I hope you uh, hope you have a good week and I will see you again next time ciao for now